My name is Edmund Turbin. I'm a solutions engineer at WP Engine. Uh, really excited about the customizer in WordPress. So I wanted to talk to you guys and just share some of the things that I've learned and some of the new features in the customizer um, and just really go through some of the cool things that it does and, and some of the ways that the customizer can change the way that we use WordPress. So we've got a couple of things to talk about today, um, namely visual site building and configuration, how users can benefit from using the customizer, the different use cases, uh, development approach, and of course the new functionality. Um, all right, so there's a spelling error in this slide, 10 points to anybody who can spot it. Yeah, all right. You can see me after, afterwards after the presentation for some swag at the WP Engine booth. All right, onwards. So I read a really cool article today about WordPress and market share. So WordPress is 27.1% of the CMS market share, and that's huge. Um, it's a 2% increase from last year, and one of the things that uh, has been cited is that the customizer is a big part of the development of WordPress, and, and the future of WordPress will be linked to the customizer. That makes a lot of sense when there's a lot of competition where you have visual site editors and other platforms and other solutions. So I wanted to talk about some of the reasons why you'd use the customizer, the benefits, and then and really how to, how to customize the customizer itself. So what is it? The customizer is part of the WordPress dashboard. It's a different way to interface with WordPress. It gives you a, uh, a way to preview changes and also to uh, make changes directly in WordPress, so essentially a real-time editor. Um, any of the changes that you make are done directly on the site, so you'll see your, your changes uh, as soon as you save. And then you're not really changing code, you're changing configuration. So this is not something that you'd need dev resources for. The people that can use it are currently admins. So it's uh, the roles in WordPress that can use the customizer are the super admin and administrator. For this to be useful, you'd want to open up the, uh, the customizer to other users. So you, you'd want to make it so that your editors could use the customizer. That's, that's possible. You'll have to actually do some work to make that hap happen, though. So the customizer begs the question of configuration over code or configuration and code. So maybe it's not so much uh, either or, but uh, two things that could work happily together. Um, configuration makes it simple to modify things, uh, to change things and make it easier to, uh, to actually go in and, and do a simple change without having to dive into code. Um, so, and again, you're not going to need a, a developer to, to make these changes. Um, it's really good for people who know how to use a platform. So they know how to use WordPress. They can get in, make simple changes, and, and uh, n there's really no uh, deployment process. So you won't have to go in and uh, uh, go from a development environment to uh, staging and then production environment. So relatively simple. Some of the, the downsides of configuration are that you're, you're not going to be able to fix things that are, are complex. So it won't be good for a solution where you have to, to go and, and really make major changes. You're limited to what's been defined. Uh, the changes in configuration with regards to the customizer are saved in the database. There's no revisions, no way to go back. There's no way to back things up uh, besides uh, an entire database backup, so, which may or may not be possible. Um, so you, as far as the solution goes, you're only able to change things that are in the theme, so in, in, in that are defined in, at the theme level itself the customizer. Um, so as far as a solution, that is definitely a limitation. Um, if you do make a change in configuration, it may not be permanent. And it's potentially something that can be overwritten. Uh, somebody can change that, another user. Um, so may not be a permanent solution. Uh, and then, then again, the deployment moving from one environment to the next it will, will also be tricky as, as you'd have to do that in, in the database. 
so what are the benefits of coding? Why would you want to code over configure? I, I think you have a, the ability to have a much more robust solution. You have a, a way to, to do something that is uh, uh, more complicated, more complex, maybe more appropriate. You don't have limits. So you, can do, uh, you can go as far as your knowledge will take you. Um, so you also have the benefit of version control. And, and that's really important because you can roll back your changes and also track your changes, your code changes, uh, understand what's happened, uh, and, and manage your code that way. You have the benefit of developer knowledge. So developers will know what the best solution is, and maybe there are a few options to, to do things. So their knowledge can, can be a real asset as far as code is concerned. Um, and then also developers will commonly do code review. And they'll work with, with peers to, to look at their code. Uh, it can be a, a learning experience, and, and they could also suggest better solutions and sort of put their brains together and uh, come up with something that, that makes sense. OK, so visual site building. Let's actually look at the customizer and see what it does, see, see what it looks like. I'm not sure how many of you here are, what the split is between WordPress users and, and just technologists. Um, but we'll, we'll actually take a look so you can see what it, what it looks like and what the experience is from the user perspective. There are some default settings in the customizer that are defined by WordPress core. Uh, and, and this is something that's evolved as, uh, as time goes on. Uh, and so in the, the next release of WordPress, there are some really big changes, which I'll talk about at, uh, at the last section. So there's a couple of things you can change that are really simple in the customizer, things like the, uh, the site name and tagline. And these are saved in the database as options. So it's, it's basically a row in the database where it has it, an ID, it's got uh, a name, and then a value. And these are considered site-wide changes. So anything that you use may, may actually, so any theme or plugin that you use may actually take advantage of those options. So saved in the WP options table. Um, so that, that's really all of, uh, that's the location where all of your, uh, your options are saved for the customizer. Um, okay, so this is actually what the customizer looks like. It's uh, you can uh, you can see that on the the right hand side you've got a preview, and then the left hand side you've got uh, you've got uh, uh, your your settings. So uh, sorry, I can't actually see that here. So let's we'll just look at the screen. So uh, it, it's it's relatively simple and it's it's laid out in a way where you can still see your site and you, you can get uh, a list of the options that are available that you can customize. All right, so one of the tabs that we just saw was uh, site identity. So I've, I've actually popped that open and uh, you can see that there are several fields and buttons where you can go in. And as you make changes here, you'll, you'll see these instantly update uh, in the, the right-hand side. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a demo of what it's like to change the, uh, the site title. So I've gone to Customize. I'm opening the Customizer. I am going to Identity, and I can change that site title. You can see it updating on the page itself. And then I Save and Publish. And you can see that. You can see demo site is changed. There's some other options that you can change. So some of the other tabs are uh, you've got menus. So you can customize uh, and actually create a menu in the customizer. And you can set the different locations, which are, are in your theme. Uh, you, can, you can put a menu in the locations that are already defined. Um, you can also use widgets. So if you have a widget area in your theme, you can put widgets into areas uh, depending on uh, you know, what, what page you're on using the customizer. And you, you can see that as I've gone into the section, I, I've got a, uh, a, a nice list of the different type of widgets um, that are available. All right. So 
there's another way to get into the customizer than on the, the top navigation. And in this example, I'll just show you what it actually looks like. Um, and many of the settings that you would change in the customizer by default are already available in the dashboard. You just have to do some menu diving to find things. And some people will prefer this, but the customizer just exposes the same information in a different way. So I've opened it from the sidebar in appearance. So that pops open the customizer, and I can go into colors. I'm going to change the theme, make everything dark. And if you've defined your, your theme colors, that can be a really quick and easy way to make a dramatic change to your site. So the site has now gone dark. Uh, there's a mobile preview, so the, the customer uh, customizer allows you to use uh, different screen sizes to, to actually see what it would look like your site in, uh, in a mobile or tablet view. Um, and I mentioned that there, there are, are settings for the customizer saved in the, the database. Um, they are saved in the WP options table. There's two different types of options that the customizer uses. So one is a, is a standard option. Um, and then the, the second one is a, a theme mod. The theme mod is a, an, it's essentially a, another row in the database, except for it saves multiple pieces of information. So it does this by putting it into an array. So I'll give you an example very simple of what that array looks like. I think it's really interesting because at first it looks kind of scary, but if you think about it, it's actually not so bad. So the theme that I used for most of this uh, presentation was uh, 2015. And in that, I've saved a, a theme mod. Um, it, is, it looks like that. So there are a couple of things that I highlighted in orange, and the, the orange values, they're, they're actually telling you what, the, the, what type of data it is. So A1 means that it's an array with one element. Uh, so then the, the S means it's a string with a certain amount of characters. So I've got one element. I've got, uh, I've got uh, a string with customizer link color, so 20 characters. And then I've got a value for that, which is seven characters. And that's a hex code for the color. OK. So what, what, what can we get out of the customizers? How can we benefit? And how can we use this? What are the use cases? So uh, I, I think the, the best one is configuration. So right now, if you are a developer or a site builder, you can make a lot of these changes uh, in, in code. I'm sorry, not in code. You can make them w without code changes, uh, just visually. And if you're the type of, uh, of, of WordPress dev who doesn't actually like to get into co code, this is perfect. You can do a lot of the configuration work there. Um, you can use the customizer as a developer and then build out parts that you foresee being changed by users. So and I think that's also a great way to do most of the work, but then leave some options that can be changed at a later date uh, and, and actually customized uh, depending on who's using the site. Another use case that I would see is really interesting is using the customizer to create a multi-site. So, create multi-site children that have a similar theme but have certain elements that would change. So it, it can be a really great way to, to use WordPress as a boilerplate. All right, so I, I've got uh, a couple of slides about how to develop in the customizer, using the customizer. Um, I won't get too technical. I don't think there's really code examples, but I just wanted to talk theoretically about how this works. You've got core files. So there, there are several locations in WordPress where, where you have uh, customizer, fi customizer files. So WP admin and WP includes. So that's all of that. That's in the base of WordPress. But there's also a way to add files into your theme. So and you would do that in your functions.php or uh, add includes. So you can break out the code and, and organize it uh, in an include file. There is a, a, a theme, uh, sorry, there, there's a, um, a part of the customizer that does uh, context. So essentially, 
it, it knows what page you're on and will display data that's relative to that. And an example is a widget area, which may not be displayed on each page. So if it's not on the page that you're on, you won't see an option in the customizer. So it's relevant to really where you are on the site. Customizer API is object-oriented. And without getting into the code, I'll discuss some of those options uh, some of the objects, you have uh, panel, which is sort of the, the, the main uh, sort of container. There are sections, which contain controls and settings. It looks a little bit like this, and uh, we've already seen a little bit of how, how that works, but I'll give you an example of how this is all organized and in the actual uh, WordPress dashboard. So I've made this customize it panel. That is a, a custom option. So these are sections. In these sections, all of the changes that I'm making are with the uh, um, uh, settings and options. So you can see that when I make a change, it happens in real time. And, and that is uh, um, just a fantastic way to do things quickly. OK, I think we've talked about that. Um, one of, the, one of the interesting things about the customizer, and I think a, a relatively new uh, change, is the way that it refreshes data. Um, so there, there are two, two methods that can be used. One is, is the, the default, which is refresh. The entire frame is refreshed. So if you think of going to a web page and then loading another web page, it's the time it takes to load all of the data into your browser. The second one, post message, is a little bit more modern. That's what we were looking at in my example. So that is uh, a, a uh, asynchronous request, and it refreshes the data that's been changed. And you can see that as you know, I was typing in the the uh, uh, in the field, you could see the text change. Okay, so some of the new stuff, new and exciting stuff. There are a couple of really exciting things for me, um, and I think the, the, the first of which is the CSS editor. So you will now have the ability to actually go in and create uh, CSS changes. And that's something that I, I don't know if uh, any of you have caught this, but I've been using a, a beta version of WordPress. So some of these features you've actually seen already, if, if you noticed. But uh, so what, what that CSS editor does is it adds a, another section in the customizer that allows you to get into the code, make changes. So, uh, so some other features are there's a theme switcher, uh, content creation. You can actually create posts in the customizer. Um, and persistent changes, which uh, I'll go into a little bit more detail about. And uh, visual edit shortcuts, again, you've actually already seen that. CSS Editor is, is a huge development. Uh, it will give you a visual way to make CSS changes very quickly on the fly. Uh, great for learning and testing. So you, you, since you can see the changes as you're working, I, I think it's a, it's a good way to really see how your code will affect the site. Um, that said, there are no revisions. It's a, it's a little bit risky. If you delete something, then it's possibly deleted for good. So it's not necessarily permanent. And your styles are being overwritten. And it, it's interesting to, to think about the way that this is saved. So your CSS is saved at the theme level. So if you change your theme, the, the CSS will actually change as well. Okay, so this is how it works. I've put together a, a little demo of changing some CSS. So I've created a class for site title. That's the top customize it link. We'll change it to red. Instant. And I've also done the, uh, the entry title. And that will come up as orange. And that, to me, is an amazing thing. I think it's just a, a great way to be able to work with CSS in a modern way. And one thing to know is that uh, SAS is not supported, so it's, it's not the most uh, uh, futuristic way of, of working with styles, but, but definitely good. You can uh, change your theme. You can actually change the theme that you're working on in the customizer, in the sidebar. 
And uh, you can download themes from the WordPress repository, or you can use themes that you've already installed. Creating content is a huge addition when you're creating a navigation, you first need to have a place where the navigation to goes, a place where navigation goes to. So in, in having the ability to create a, a, a page in the customizer, you can quickly create those pages and then add those pages into navigation. Uh, and the, uh, it, it's not uh, as complete as using the WordPress editor, but it does give you the uh, ability to quickly get those, uh, those posts or pages created as a stub and then uh, populate the content at a later time. These change sets are really interesting to me because it's, it's a way of making the data persistent across the customizer. Um, if you think about it, so we're talked to, we talked a lot about uh, not being able to, to save things because it's in the database, and if that changes, there's not really a, a backup. Well, persistent changes uh, will, will make that, uh, uh, it's a solution for, for actually keeping uh, the, the data uh, and not losing it. So that if you think about the way that I've been using this customizer, so I make a change, and then it doesn't really happen until I save it. So if I make a change, and then I leave the customizer, so I navigate away, I've lost my change. A change set is going to allow you to keep a, a temporary version of all the things that change. So I think it's quite clever. It will allow you to bookmark, and you'll be able to, to go back and, and even share those changes. Um, the other really cool possibility there is that you can automate it via API. So you'd be able to create a change set and then actually deploy that. Um, so you'd have all of your changes uh, be added to the customizer. So some really inter interesting things that can happen, and I'll, I'll be watching to see uh, where that goes. The visual edit shortcuts, we've seen this already. It's, uh, there's a little icon with a, a pencil next to some of the fields. So this is what it looks like, and I'll, I'll just be able to, to actually change what's on the left-hand side of the customizer from the right-hand side, from the preview. So if I go into the pencil, I can go and change the text of the site title. And that's it. So the takeaways are configuration can make it really simple for your users to, to work in WordPress. And if you give users options, they have more control, more power to, to work, and it will free up your devs so that they can focus on, on coding. Thanks very much. I will uh, keep this uh, deck on, uh, online. Uh, I'll, I'll send a link from uh, my, my Twitter account. And uh, it's been great. Thanks for having me, guys.